Stormwater is water that originates during rain events. Stormwater management involves managing the quantity, and more specifically, the quality of stormwater runoff, with the ultimate goal of keeping our water clean. In this edition of Spotlight on Bowling Green, we'll explore the city's stormwater program and the unique challenges they face with our karst topography. Stormwater management is a very broad term that encompasses a lot of specific things that people in municipalities need to do for themselves, as well as municipalities need to do for the people. The reason that, that Bowling Green cares so much about their stormwater quality uh, is because that it's important that we catch pollutants before they get into the karst system. Because once they're in the karst system, they're out of sight, out of mind, you might say. Whereas other communities have streams and canals and, and ditches that are easily observed in terms of pollutants. Uh, the city of Bowling Green is a little different. The topography in Bowling Green is absolutely fascinating. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I enjoy my job so much and it's also one of the things that makes my job so challenging. Kentucky has more miles of coastline than any other state except Alaska. So where's the water? In our case, all that water is underground, beneath the earth in what we call karst features and karst aquifers. Karst being just a fancy word for caves. Our stormwater runoff runs to the nearest vertical karst feature, or dry well, and it drains down into the cave system. Now, that's extremely unique in terms of how we develop because we're very, very focused around building retention and detention basins. And we're also very focused around drilling Underground Injection Control Act Class 5 stormwater wells. Now, that's a really technical way of putting it, but what we call those locally is dry wells. We uh, deliberately drill 8 or 10 inch vertical holes down into the cave system to allow our stormwater runoff to run down into the caves faster. And some that kind of makes Bowling Green special in a way. And uh, you talk to other, I guess, hydrologists and they get excited to come here over it. Once it's down in the cave system, that karst system or cave system functions like a storm sewer system that any other community might have. The difference being, if you're in a large community with a well-established storm sewer system, they have a map and they have a known size of the pipes. They know how well that system can carry the water and further they can maintain it. With us, we inject all of our stormwater into the karst system, but we don't know how large it is. We don't know what kind of shape it's in and we don't know what the actual carrying capacity is. So where other communities are able to plan ahead and they'll know exactly how any particular development may impact their storm sewer infrastructure, with us it's more trial and error. You know, we still haven't been able to map and tell, okay, well, if our water goes down in this dry well or sinkhole, where does it pop out? We still don't know, how, know all the places. One of the uh, projects our department's working on is mapping our dry wells. So actually creating a database of the, uh, the locations, the quality of our uh, dry wells and, and, and sinkhole structures that we have that are taking in our stormwater and, and getting an accurate number of just how many we, we truly have. In 1970, the Environmental Protection Agency was formed to protect human health and the environment. The EPA administers federal regulations regarding the protection and conveyance of stormwater. So it basically came from, from EPA rules and regulations. And so they started in places where they really had serious problems. Not that Bowling Green didn't have serious pollution, certainly we did. Back in the day, Bowling Green was advertised um, nationally as having a built-in sewer system. So all the caves, Lost River Cave is one example of that. Rather than having a separate sanitary storm system, everybody just pumped their waste into the car system. The city serves as a central resource for the community to reach out to, to ensure that anything that they observe is taken care of and is responded to. In a more formal manner, our role revolves around our Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System Permit, or MS4 for short. The MS-4 permit is a federal EPA mandate that is administered by the state, which then passes down to the cities. Bowling Green's MS-4 permit demands that we do six what we call minimum control measures. We educate the public about stormwater issues. We involve the public with addressing stormwater issues. 
We prohibit and enforce illicit discharges, which are discharges of anything other than stormwater to our storm sewer system. We look out for stormwater discharges for construction sites and ensure that construction site operators use the appropriate controls. For development and redevelopment, we ensure that those projects install the appropriate post-construction stormwater treatment devices. And finally, our sixth minimum control measure is what we call good housekeeping. And essentially, good housekeeping boils down to the city of Bowling Green will undertake all of its operations in the exact same manner that we expect from everyone else. And we'll ensure that we are sweeping our streets, uh, operating our construction sites appropriately, and ensuring that, that none of our waste is entering the stormwater uh, runoff inappropriately. Suspended solids are one of the most widespread pollutants affecting our water sources, with construction sites being a large conveyor of these pollutants. Because of this, Public Works focuses some of their resources to regulating construction stormwater runoff. As the Environmental Compliance Coordinator for City of Bowling Green, uh, some of the things I do is uh, going out to construction sites and doing site inspections. What I'm going out looking for is, has the contractor put up the right erosion and sediment control devices that will help keep mud on their site, keeping the stormwater that runs off the site cleaner. We usually call those or BMPs or best management practices. And that can be silt fence, having a construction entrance, which is a nice you know, gravel driveway for equipment and trucks to come in and out to get out of the mud. So I'll go out, visit with the contractors, go to the sites and make sure that they are doing and meeting the requirements that we've set out. Uh, one of the other things I do is review the permit applications, looking to make sure that as far as the stormwater quality requirements, they're meeting what we've set out. And then another thing that we uh, require is that you have a certified EPSC contractor. So that's someone who's gone through either the city uh, training course or either with the state or out of state as far as erosion prevention and sediment control. We train every single contractor that's going to be pulling permits in the city of Bowling Green for any projects that are greater than 750 square feet, exactly what's expected of them from an environmental standpoint. The reason that we've elected to require this course, which is one day and the certification lasts for three years, is that we feel that once those contractors understand precisely what the federal and state mandates are, that they're going to be able to make determinations about their sites that can align with their budgets and our inspection process is less about uh, enforcement or fines and it's more about coaching to ensure that our contractors understand exactly what's expected of them. For those businesses that have expanded by over 10,000 feet since April 1 of 2008 along with an, a, a soil disturbance area of greater than one acre for the construction, they fall into our post-construction program, which means that they have a different kind of best management practice, or BMP, that's geared at treating the runoff from their impervious surfaces, which are hard surfaces, asphalt or rooftops. That's generally where pollutants build up in between rain events. So these BMPs are in place in the ground so that each time it rains, what we call the first flush, or the first bit of rain that runs off of those impervious surfaces, passes through these BMPs and is cleaned up. Part of what we'll do is we'll help coach the engineers for the site to help develop a stormwater quality management plan. Uh, in that management plan, we'll, it'll go in and discuss what water quality devices are on the site and how to maintain them. There will be an inspection maintenance agreement form uh, that'll be recorded with the deed. That'll go stay with the property uh, for the life of the property and the future property owners stating that there is a water quality device on the site and that they are required for the life of the property to maintain it. An informed and knowledgeable community is a crucial part of the team that creates a successful stormwater management program. City staff conduct presentations on water quality and the impact that contaminants can have on our cave systems and surface streams. They also partner with other agencies that have a vested interest in clean water to implement community education programs. The MS4 Cooperative Committee is a joint effort between the City of Bowling Green, 
the Warren County Office of Stormwater Management, Bowling Green Municipal Utilities, Western Kentucky University Department of Geography and Geology, as well as Western Kentucky University Facilities Management, and the Kentucky Highways Department District 3. Every six months, all of these agencies, some of which are other MS4 permit holders, gather in the fiscal courthouse of Warren County and provide a brief update on what we've accomplished over the course of the last six months and what we hope to accomplish over the course of the next six months. Those meetings are televised and they're open to the public and they are a point at which we can either learn where the public has new concerns that we haven't heard from yet and we can also collaborate with one another on grant applications or on projects that are larger than any one of our individual agencies. Our Streamside Field Days program has grown from a small one classroom cooperative effort between Warren County Office of Stormwater Management and the City of Bowling Green into a multi-agency environmental field day for school aged children that surpasses anything that I've seen anywhere else in the state of Kentucky. City of Bowling Green, Warren County Office of Stormwater Management, BGMU, Kentucky Fish and Wildlife, Kentucky Division of Water, Warren County Soil Conservation Service, and even the Warren County Extension Office 4-H program have participated with us. We actually take very large groups of students, up to 150 at a time, out to a local stream. And once they're there, they get to work with career professionals who teach them about how to determine stream health through water chemistry, through the life cycle or the, the plants and animals that they find there, all the way up to fish capture and identification with Kentucky Fish and Wildlife and the Kentucky Division of Water. They also learn about soils with the Soil Conservation Service, agriculture with 4-H, and water treatment and wastewater treatment with the Kentucky Division of Water. It's an opportunity that most of these kids have never seen before to actually get their feet wet in a stream with someone who can tell them how to test the pH and what does that pH mean for the wildlife there, or whether or not they're going to find Cadis fly larvae. And if they do find those Cadis fly larvae, what does that tell us about the stream? And it's, uh, it's been extremely well received and it's grown year after year to the point that we're doing 300 kids in the spring, 300 kids in the fall, and a smattering of 20 or 30 kids at a time through some summer school programs. We're up to three, four, five events per year. All members of our community can play a role in reducing the pollutants that impact our stormwater. The main thing that public can do to keep our water clean uh, in Bowling Green is to make sure that what you do above ground is clean, uh, that you don't re release pollutants, uh, that you take advantage of our household hazardous waste days that we have throughout the county. It's a joint effort between the county and the city to get rid of any paints that you have, any electronics that could possibly uh, decay and get into our water system, uh, any pesticides, herbicides, um, any household chemicals, uh, make sure that you, you participate in those events. Uh, we don't want those entering our water system. We don't want those making their way eventually to Barren River where we get our drinking water. So it's an everyday conscious effort to make sure that you're keeping stormwater clean in Bowling Green. Illicit discharge is the induction of non-stormwater uh, on the ground or into our storm sewer system. And some examples of that is like mortar oil, uh, leaves, and yard waste. Some can be sanitary sewer waste, uh, septic tank effluent or discharge, even car wash wastewater. We are keeping a watch as we're out and about in town looking for this discharge uh, detection, but a lot of it, because we can't be all over town all the time, is uh, a complaint or a call from a citizen, we're able to go out and inspect the situation. The importance of protecting our water cannot be understated. Gaylord Nelson, the founder of Earth Day, said that the ultimate test of man's conscience may be his willingness to sacrifice something today for future generations whose words and thanks will not be heard. I think it's important because I'm working to improve Bowling Green. Doing the site inspections and the permit reviews, you know, we are working towards improving our water. And at the end of the day, you know, that's huge. Bowling Green's had a long history of trying to clean up things that were done wrong in the past. Um, today, we're just trying to, to continue that good work and to make sure that for generations to come, our waters, the water we drink, 
The water that we enjoy for recreation at our parks is as clean as it can be and safe. For more information about this or any other Spotlight on Bowling Green program, contact City Hall at 270-393-3000.